Hello and welcome to another used car heaven here on Men & Motors. On this week's program we're looking at prestige convertibles, sensible cars at sensible money, an Audi, a BMW and a Saab for this week's viewer who we'll meet in a moment. Also on this week's program Simon Hughes, the car doctor, is back in the surgery and Brad will have more insider tips at the trading post. But before that, let's meet this week's viewer. And it's Taz Rowett, who's 25 and from Leeds. Taz has just graduated and currently drives an Escort Cabriolet, but he wants to trade up to a better car. He's enjoyed his soft top so far, and he must have another one and has around £12,000 to spend on his next car, which he wants to be packed with goodies, leather, air conditioning and an electric roof, but he doesn't want a two-seater roadster. Hi Taz, nice Hi to meet there. you. Thanks for coming along today. We've lined up three really smart cabriolets for you. The Saab, the BMW, mm -hmm. and the first one to look at is this, the Audi. Now, it's maybe looking a little bit old, and of course there's a new model out now, but do you like it first of all? Yeah, I do like the colour on that. It does look uh, pretty neat with the nice leather interior in there. Um, nice equipped. alloys. Nice alloys, Recaro seats, air conditioning, electric hood. It's you got all the features, it. yeah. All the features. 2.6 engine, plenty of power, plenty of performance. Yeah. The, like it's been automatic. Um, it'd be easy to drive, I guess. But nice around town. Okay, well that's the first car. Can we have a look at the second car? And it's this, a BMW 328 convertible. Now, of course, these are very desirable motors. Mm, very definitely. smart. Yeah, very nice. Beamer, again, German. Yeah. Reliability there. It's a 328, 2.8 engine. Again, similar to the Audi. Lots of performance there. Lots of performance, yeah. It might be heavy on the petrol. Uh, but again, it does look nice. Nice dark finish colour on there. I mean, all of, nice. these, all of these cars that we've lined up for you today are sort of all between eleven and thirteen thousand pounds. Is that the sort of budget that you're looking for? Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I am looking to go up. I've currently got a Ford convertible, so I'm just wanted to upgrade uh, onto something a bit, bit larger, more you room. Want something yeah. with the right budget on the front. Yeah, definitely. Have a look yeah. at the third car. And the third car, Taz, is this. It's the Saab 9.3 convertible, two liter SE. Now, have you ever considered a Saab before? Not really. I've, they're meant to be nice cars, but I'm not very keen on the Saab, I'm afraid. The badge doesn't quite live yeah. up to the same as a BMW or an Audi or a Work. I'm afraid, no. Well, I think you may be presently surprised by this car. I mean, it's a good spec car. It's the SE, so it's got everything on it. Leather, it's a full four-seater, there's bags of room, well-equipped. Yeah, it, look, it looks the part, doesn't it? It does look nice, actually. Yeah, I'm not happy with the alloys. But You're not keen on those alloys yeah. at the moment. Interior and the colour does look pretty much okay. Well, the most important thing is the way it drives, so let's jump in. We'll Thanks. take it out for a spin. Cheers. Right. Okay. Well, Taz, this is the Saab 93 convertible, two litre. This isn't one of the turbochargers, it's the base. So you've got 130 brake horsepower, but does it feel powerful? Does it feel? Yeah, it seems steady, easy going, you know. Pretty smooth, isn't it? Very smooth, good handling. Yeah. Yeah, steering wheel looks very nice. Power steering in its car, which helps. Absolutely. Obviously, it's a larger car, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you want so a car moving. with everything on it. Features wise, yes. And this has got it. I mean, climate yeah. control, decent stereo system, CD, leather upholstery. Mm, smooth ride again. Smooth, isn't it? Slightly bigger on the car, it feels Does big. It feel a big car. I suppose it would do compared car. to your Escort, though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think this is a lovely colour, both inside and out. It's the right sort of combination. Uh, it's done 51,000 miles. It's about average, maybe slightly over average miles, but I mean, look at the price of it now. It's sort of 12, 13,000 pounds for this, and it costs 26 grand new. Double that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, a lot good of money. Saving, so it's it? a good value for cars. Good it's value for money. It's good value for money, yeah. Well, here's more on the Saab 93 convertible. Here's Brendan. Taz, have you ever tried naked parachuting? I'll bet you haven't. Nor have I, but I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy it until you've tried it. So it is with this next car, a Saab 93 convertible. Now that's a strange metaphor I know Taz, but bear with me, because the Saab, like its Swedish cousin the Volvo, is a car that you either love or hate. You've probably already decided whether you're going to like this car or not, but I'm not here to impose my values on you, I'll leave that to Ian Royal. But I think this is a beautiful car, a stunning car, nay. It's a 99T, it's an SE, so it's fully kitted in there, but it's just outside your budget. This car will be about 12 and a half grand but look for something a little older and perhaps with a full service history and low mileage 
a 98R will come in at about £10,000 and I think that represents value for money. But as I say, you've probably already decided, but let's see if you can change your mind. There we go, Taz, that's the Saab 93 convertible. Did you like it? Did you see what I was getting at before? Yeah, I can understand. It's, it is. It's, it's, once you drive it, you get a different feel of the car. It doesn't appeal as much as you do originally, but once you just settle in, you, you don't think it's too bad. But it's still maybe not got quite the right badge for you in terms of really the sort of no. image of it, maybe. Yeah, exactly. It's nice, comfortable drive, but the image and still bugs me a bit, I guess. 13 grand for that. Do you reckon that's good value for money, first of all? It is. Like you say, you've brought what is lost uh, from its, its original half, it? half yeah. the value yeah. so for the price it's not a bad car at all but maybe that's a car for a few years ahead and Possibly, not quite yes. at the moment not at the moment no <laughs> all right we're going out in the bmw next has but before that here's simon hughes he's the car doctor back in the surgery Right, today we've got a Volvo 240. They come in different shapes like saloons, estates and coupes. And they've got two main problems with them that uh, will affect you if you're an owner of one. One is that the rear tyres wear out excessively, uh, quicker than a racing car on a Sunday afternoon. But the main problem is under the bonnets and that they develop a bit of a water leak. And it's quite a common problem right across the range. So I'm going to show you what it is and what to do about it. It's actually the water pump which is buried down here, but I've got one that I prepared earlier. And you can see that uh, inside it goes really sort of manky and they spring a leak. Now, if you check your water on a weekly basis, you'll notice whether or not it's, it's starting to leak. And that's my tip to check the water regularly. If it has got a leak, you need to get this replaced because if the uh, water runs out of the engine, it can overheat, causing serious engine damage. Now then, if you can't see a water leak, the sensible person that owns one of these would maybe nip along to your garage and get it pressure tested with one of these little devices. And then if it is leaking, you can get a new water pump fitted and hopefully it'll not cost no more than about 65 quid. Um, if it isn't leaking, then you're going to have to start saving up because you're going to have to buy one sooner or later. And with respect to the tyres, just check your tyre pressures on a weekly basis. Thanks very much, Simon. There'll be more from the car doctor next week here on News Car Heaven. But on this week's programme, Taz here is after a new convertible. Already driven the Saab 93, which you sort of liked. Was nice. Yeah, ish, nice. ish. Nice. But this is the one that you really had your eye on. Mm. BMW 328. Start it up. Let's go. Most important thing is the way this thing drives, and I suspect it will be good. Let's have a look. Let's go. <laughs> well, Taz, you are after a car with the right badge on the front, and now we're in the BMW 3 Series convertible. Now, this car is different to the other two, and it's rear wheel drive, the other two are front wheel drive. So it's more of a sporty performance car for BMW, always, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this car is an N reg, and it has done quite a high mileage. But, I mean, these sort of cars can take it. It's done 87,000 miles. Would that be a problem for you? I mean, would you want something with a, a little bit less mileage on the front? Um, you would look for that, but not really. Like you say, with cars like this, I mean, you can feel the It'll power going running. through, and you know it's running very smoothly. As long as it's, it's been well looked after, it's got a good service. Well maintenance, yeah, good yeah. service history. Shouldn't yeah. be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem, no. no. I mean, look at the fact that when this car was new, it was, well, at least 32,000 pounds. And I suspect that leather wasn't standard at that time, so that would have been extra. Although you don't like the leather on this, do you? No. Well, you don't like the colour of it. I, I, do, I don't like the leather in here, no. It just doesn't go with this car. I, I prefer something more subtle, more, more, more calm. A like too a, bright and over the top. Yeah, a bit too bright and over the top yeah. of it. It's much more showing. I yeah. think it overshadows the colour of the car, actually. Yeah. Because the colour of the car I do like a lot. So, yeah, a lot, yeah. nice deep green, is that? Yeah, we need to get to like this car. Yeah. I'm just not happy with the 2.8, I guess. Uh, insurance might be wise, yeah. you're looking at sort of group 14 to 16 insurance on so maybe for your age, Jump it might be a fairly expensive. Fairly expensive, bit yeah, a bit hefty. <laughs> Heavy on the petrol, probably. Heavy on the petrol as well, yeah. Because I won't be doing a lot of motorway, probably. So. Yeah. Well, Taz, let's find out more about the BMW 3 Series convertible. Here's Brendan. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that, but one look at the interior of this BMW and it's really induced the most nauseous 
sickly. I would recommend you don't look at it because this is the colour of newly born baby poo. It really is atrocious. It's a shame because this 328 injection BMW is the most desirable car, but I'm afraid it would look better with the roof up because the outside is a beautiful British racing green. But all is not well because this car is a 96N, but there are signs that it's well been around the block a few times. It's got the best part of 90,000 miles on the clock and it is just a little bit rough. And yet it still commands a price tag of about 13 grand. And that's because of what's underneath there. You see, it's a 328 and it's got about 193 brake horsepower. Whereas, Taz, if you went for a similarly aged 318 and 115 brake horsepower, you'd only be paying the best part of eight and a half grand. So the choice is yours. The compromise would be a 323. A lot cheaper, a lot less damage on your insurance and about 170 brake. But, Taz, still a beautiful car, apart from... <laughs> Well, Tessa, I thought as soon as we set off driving in this car, I could see a big smile coming over your face. You yeah. enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, I enjoyed that. The car really looks nice, nice colour and everything. Only interior, interior put like me down, off. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, if it had been in a darker colour, I think it'd have really felt for it. But yeah, I had a big smile on my face when I started <laughs> it. You like that, don't you? Yeah. So, I mean, we were saying before about maybe not a 328, but perhaps a, a 320, 320 as a sort of compromise. Yeah, definitely. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. The 328 is brilliant. Love the sound on the engine. But it just might be a bit expensive to run. Expensive to run. Mileage yeah. not a problem on a car like that? You're not, not worried really, about high mileage? No. As long as it's been looked after and well maintained, it can, can last quite a long time. OK, we're going out on the Audi very soon, Taz. But before that, we need to take a quick break. And also in part two, we've got Brad at the trading post. That's all in a couple of minutes' time. Hello and welcome back to part two of Used Car Heaven. On this week's programme, we're looking to find a new convertible for Taz. He has around £12,000 to spend on a prestige car. He's already driven the Saab 93 and the BMW 328. Soon we'll be off in the Audi convertible. Also, Brad will have more insider tips at the trading post. But before that, here's Brendan Coogan with an alternative car for Taz. Now, Taz, you might think we're pulling your proverbial, but you could be the proud owner of a used Porsche. Obviously not this fine example of a Boxster, 26 grand. No, within your budget, made by the same people, in the same place, in the same way, only 12 years ago, is this beautiful Porsche 944S from 1990 on a G-plate. And for the little sum, including these beautiful turbo alloys, it could be yours for about 10 and a half grand. Now, people like me, only usually uglier and fatter, are always banging on about service history. Well, with a Porsche, service history is king. Get as much of it as you possibly can. Even if it's just by a Porsche specialist, not necessarily one of the fancy high street dealers, get as much of it on the book as you can because there are parts under there, or very often under here, that need lots of specialist attention. But let's get back to this car because it is beautiful. Stunning condition. It's 12 years old, but that doesn't matter. It's got low mileage, about 80,000 miles and everything in there is in very good condition. One final point, get some classic car insurance, because if you can keep your mileage tires down below five or 6,000 miles, it will reduce your cost something chronic. But back to this, it's a beautiful, stunning car with loads of performance, and it's just a choice, Taz. It's over to you. Thanks, Brendan. So there we are. Brendan's alternative this week is the 944 convertible. Is that a car that appeals to you? Um, I'd say they're nice cars, obviously, but they're a bit pricey, aren't they? Bit I mean, it's about 10 grand for that, it's but it's, bad, I mean, it's getting on a bit now in age isn't it? But it is a two-seat, I'd rather something comfortable for thought at the least. Would you? Mm. So you like the idea of a Porsche, but nothing like that Nothing really. like that, no. Okay, well, what about this, the Audi? Looks I, nice, doesn't it? It does. We need to drive this. <laughs> Jump in. Well, Taz, this is the Audi convertible, 2.6 smooth car i mean you like the look of this straight away when we were showing you you originally didn't you yeah it's just the color i like a nice shiny have you always liked finish. these cars i've always liked these cars audi i've always thought comfortable reliable yeah. good safety on them safety and i've always heard a good handling and driver on them so what uh, first attracted you to them 
fact Princess Diana used to own one. Oh, definitely. I remember Princess Diana having one, and uh, <laughs> ever since then I thought, yeah, you know, I'd love to own one You'd of them. One of those they, as well one day. I remember it in the black as well, but. <laughs> The blue has always made me think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now this is actually the cheapest of the three cars it has. It's around about 11 grand, so it's one or two thousand pounds less than the other two. So on 71,000 miles, it cost 27 grand when it was new. But it's a seven-year-old car, don't forget. Yeah, it's a seven-year-old car, but it's got all good features, like I say, inside, you know. It's an old, based on an old car, as you yeah. said, which is quite strange, and still it looks and feels so nice, does this car. Um, it still has its value well, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it doesn't feel and look like a seven-year-old. It doesn't, no. I mean, it's got a nice leather interior in here, the Ricardo interior. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think the body on this, to me, in the passenger seat, feels more steady and more secure than the Saab, but maybe not as quite as firm as the BMW. Firm, yeah. It is, it's much more secure and firm than the, than the Saab, I guess, yeah. yeah. Well, here's Brendan with more about the Audi convertible. Now, I think I look ridiculous. Here, here, I hear I know, I mean, specifically in the back of this car. In fact, in the back of any 2 plus 2, because when you see grown-ups in the back of a convertible like this, it smacks of a bit of naffness of they've gone out for a trip because it's a convertible. But as rear space goes, this Audi is certainly on a par with the BMW and better than the Saab. But it's still naff. Brendan, what do you think? Well, no more or less ridiculous than me, Brendan. Inside the cabin here, equipment levels on this Audi are really first class. So look out for those on second-hand cars because this has got electric Recaro leather seats inside, air conditioning, a bang up-to-date CD player and an automatic gearbox, all of which adds to value. But it's the engine on this car that counts, so Brendan, what's that like? Well, I think you both look ridiculous. Underneath here is 150 brake horsepower, a V6 2.5 litre engine. But shop around for a car that doesn't have most of those extras, and you should get one within your budget, Taz. There we go, Taz, we've been out in the Saab, been out in the BMW, and I suspect there was a bit of a smile on your face about that Audi as well. Yeah, I thought they were good cars, and uh, I was wanting to test one of them. Does that confirm it for you? Yeah, very good handling, nice drive. Reliable. Good 2.6 engine, plenty of power there. A lot of power there, yeah. Do you like the automatic gearbox on it? I wasn't looking at it at first, but I did like that. I and this is the cheapest it. car as well, 11 grand for this. Mm, interesting. It's well within your budget. Yeah, look, nice colour. Nice uh, interior as well. So. Well, you've got a decision to make very soon, and I don't know where on earth you're going to go, to be honest. We'll find that out in a moment's time, but before that, here's Brad at the Trading Post. This is the aluminium-built Audi A8 Saloon, Audi's largest car, on a par with Mercedes S-Class and BMW 7 Series. Various engine sizes range from 2.8, 3.7, up to the 4.2 S8. Very well built, as you would imagine being a German built car, aluminium bodied. Bear in mind, because it is aluminium bodied, that if you do get any dents like this one here on the nose, then it can cost a lot of money to actually put right because of the aluminium in the car. This car being a 3.7 Quattro would list at about £40,000, brand new. The bad news from Audi's point of view is they do lose a lot of money. The good news from your point of view is that you can pick these cars up a ridiculously cheap price. Something like this with 50,000 miles on it for under £20,000. A very good buy and a very well built car. Inside the car, as you can imagine, it's very well built. The interior is always finished off to a high standard as you would expect in any German car. All nice soft leather, all nice wood panelling in the car. Most of them have an automatic gearbox. Bear in mind some of them are full wheel drive, so it's always advisable to drive the car before you plump one of these vehicles and check the gearbox was everything that it should do. Service history is also important. Check it's been done by a dealer. If it's due a service, it's always advisable to find how much it's going to cost. For instance, this one is coming up to 60,000 miles. It's due a 60,000 mile service and you could end up costing you four to 500 quid to actually service the vehicle to keep up the service records. Check the leather as well, check it doesn't need conalizing, where it's worn a bit on the edges, you could be into a, a lot more money if you want to put the leather straight. 
All in all, the Audi A8 is a great saloon car. Uh, like I said, a car which is on a par with an S-Class uh, and a BMW 7 Series that you can pick up for under £20,000. Thanks, Brad. There'll be more insider tips on the trading post at the same time next week here on Used Car Heaven. But on this week's programme, it's decision time for Taz. Hope you've had a good day with us today. Yes, I have. Thank and you're driving all these smart cars. Yeah, I have done, yeah. Well, I think we've come up with three crackers for you. Ooh. And we want, in reverse order, your three, two, one. Nice what are you putting three. number three? Number three, close, but sab. I'm not surprised about that. Bit. I was trying to push you in the other direction, but... <laughs> you were trying, yeah. I, <laughs> I tried tell. hard, didn't But I? yes, like you said, to drive it is a completely different story to the way it It's looked. a really comfortable car, it's but comfortable. maybe not what you're looking for at this moment. No, not really. No, it just didn't appeal to me as much as probably the other two. In a few years' time, maybe you might maybe, think about something maybe. like that. So that's number three, the Saab. Number two, oh, you're putting the Audi convertible. I, I at know. one stage, thought this might be number one. It almost not. did, yes. The, I know it's an it automatic. Nearly, um, but... That, that made me really think yeah. really about automatics. You like the automatic, didn't you? Yeah, I'm surprised with them. Yeah, Quite for driving really around for town, driving very around easy. Town. Nice colour on it, nice, nice black leather. Well equipped. Well equipped, yeah. Good price, cheap as well. Very cheap price. Yeah, 11 grand. Yeah. Mm. Close, but I think something just better. So number one must be yeah. the BMW, of course. Yes, it it's is. It's the 328, it's, uh, it's an N reg, 13 grand, but you don't like that interior, did you? I don't know. I'll have to change that probably. You have to rip that out. I uh, know. I mean, you probably go for a compromise and maybe go for a 320 or something. I, I will have to, I think. 28 is just too big for me. Yeah. I, although the power's there. You know, Great you, to drive, isn't it? Brilliant to drive, lovely handling. Um, it would have to compromise for a 2 litre, I think. Good choice, though. Taz, Thank thanks you for your much. time today. That's it for this week's Used Car Heaven. Join us again at the same time next week.